nine eight, nine six, eight five? Can you be sure that these grades mean what they're supposed to? Are they accurate or even comparable across the three companies? It's a difficult question, and I think it comes down to consistency. Welcome back, comic book fans, to Comics Rediscovered. I finally made it. This will be the final direct comparison in the video series that started last spring. All of the links for the other videos in the playlist will be down below, and if you haven't checked them out, I'll check out a few of those first. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more of these comparisons and reviews. Now, I went back and forth trying to determine how to go about this. I mean, how do you directly compare one company's grades to another? Is one more strict? One easier? And how do you determine that? But I think that's not even the point. While I do believe there is some difference in harshness of grading, it's not really enough to say that one company is a better grader than the other. To be honest, I think they all provide an accurate enough grading system to have some security in assessing your comics. The difference that I can see is in their own consistency. How consistently do they apply their own grading system and rules and deductions? I think I'll try to take a few runs at this because just comparing one or two books isn't enough to give a reasonable view. To start, I chose a book I had multiple copies of, all in high grade to submit one to each company. I used Far Sector number one, A cover. So I did a closer inspection of each book before submitting to check for flaws and guess at potential grades. I think they all landed pretty accurately, though the toughness of grading wasn't on par across the companies in my opinion. I figured the book that I sent to CBCS was the best of the batch, with CGC and PGX books finishing in that order. I was sort of correct, CBCS was the highest graded, but CGC and PGX fell at the same grade. Looking at just these books, I think CBCS and CGC may have been too harsh, and PGX was okay, if not slightly generous. But none of the companies took wild swings. I just feel that CBCS and CGC were a little hard on bindery defects. Sometimes they looked the other way, Sometimes not. I can't figure it out, but with a book like this with lots of blacks, I'm a bit surprised the bindery issues is what they focused on as I can't really see a lot of other defects. On the other hand, the PGX book, there is definitely a slight bend and fold in one of the corners and it deserves the grade that it was given. I wouldn't go higher on the PGX book, but I could see either the CGC or the CBCS books being graded higher. Some of the other books came back as 9.8s, as I thought they would, so I'll just roll through some shots of those books so we can see what it looks like from each company. To be honest, any of these 9-8 books would be the same grade at either of the other companies, so it's a non-comparison as far as I'm concerned. But let's look at some of the lower grades. We can look at the graders notes for those books as well, but an important note here, PGX has not responded to any of my requests for graders notes. Despite advertising it on their site, and even having a fillable form on their site for requesting graders notes. I even had a chat with an Instagram rep who told me they would get a response for me. They didn't respond. I'll still look at a few of their books and give my opinion on what the deductions may be, but without those graders notes, I really have no idea. Let's start with the CBCS books and their notes. So, how well does CBCS stay consistent? Let's compare these two books and their notes with each other. With the West Coast book, the graders notes say spine stresses, breaks color, sun shadows, and we can see a few of the spots here on the front, a couple small ticks, a little bit of color breaking, otherwise the cover is not in too bad of a shape. I have a look at the back, 
There is a few more small ticks here on the back cover. You can see these little nicks all the way down here. Nothing too terrible, but definitely a couple spots that do break the color. It also says sun shadowing, and I think that's in this left corner right here. You can see that pretty clearly. Uh, looking at the grading chart, it makes the book fall right in line. Sun shadows and stress marks on the spine. This is a 9.6, so there rightfully isn't very many graders notes, but let's look for a comparison sake anyways. Uh, it says small spine stress, front to back cover, and I think it's in here. It's just like a little spot in there. Non-color breaking. Pretty clean book, just that one tick. And here we are at the back. Otherwise, it's pretty clean. You can't even really see much of anything on the back. So, there you go. 9.6, one mark off. I think they do a pretty good job. To me, it appears consistent. They've said this is what they're looking at, and seemingly, they stuck with it. They offer a full breakdown on their site, which you can take a look at. It is fairly comprehensive to gauge what it is they're looking for and where it may have your book falling. Now here's the PGX scale. They know they use the Overstreet guidelines. And the scale is pretty in-depth with wordy descriptions. It's not the best way, but it is at least a full chart. So here is the ASM 210 in a 9.2. You can see they've got a few small spine ticks on the front. One that goes through to the back, I believe. So we've got this spot here. Otherwise, pretty clean book. Something that came out of my childhood PC. And on the back, there you go. There's coming through from the front to the back. There's also this one bindery problem in the top corner. Otherwise, pretty clean. And with this surfer coming in at a 9.0, you can see a few more issues with this book. A couple bindery problems in the corners. A few spine ticks. One or two that break color. There's another one in a little spot here. There's actually two of them there. Another one down here. And if we're looking at the back, the back is actually pretty clean aside from this top corner and this bindery issue in the bottom. But on a dark cover, not too bad of a grade. So there's a couple of the CGC books from the submission, which I also have graders notes for. So on this Werewolf by Night 37, light creasing and fingerprints on cover. You can see the creasing here on the top. And you can also see some of the spine stresses down the spine and some of the bends that are maybe in the book as well once we get to the bottom here. Definitely color breaking in a few spots. But nice presenting book, nice cover. So there's a bend here in the corner. That's a, definitely a fold from the front to the back. There's also a crease, sorry, there's also a crease on at the top. So Marvel team up with creasing, spine ticks, and bends. You can see the spine ticks down the spine here. There's actually quite a few. Another one there, that's definitely color breaking. Another one down here, which is color breaking. There's the bend here in the corner, which is also a bit color breaking. There's also a crease at the top of this book and one on the back cover corner. There, right in there, you can see the other bend and crease. Uh, not full color breaking, but definitely you can start to see it chipping away. There's also a few spine ticks here on the back. Now this came back as a 9.2 when the Werewolf by Night only came back as a 7.5. So, so CGC also posts their grading scale to their site, but a quick look will show you it's slightly devoid of any insight. 
There's a bit here, but it certainly leaves a lot of room for increased subjectivity. So I'm going to pull a book here that I think highlights something. My Marvel team up is a great book, a key book, and one from my PC. I was happy to have it graded, but because of the brevity of their grading descriptions on their site, I can only guess at this grade. I personally think it's too high, much too high. For direct comparison, my ASM came back from PGX with the same 9.2. So let's compare a CGC 9.2 and a PGX 9.2. So both are 9.2 grades. Having a look, we can count the ticks on the cover of both these books and maybe compare. So we can see on the ASM the bindery issue in the corners as well as a few of these spine ticks. It's also uh, one of the ticks that went front to back. Let's see, and the bindery issue at the top here again. And some of these ticks on the spine. And I can count a total of uh, one, two, three, four, five, six demarcations on this book. Now, looking at the team up, we can count even just the ticks down the spine. Uh, there's also this bindery issue in the corner, a bit of a fold, and then we've got this one, this one, There's a few more spots in here. And keep going down, down, down. There's two more there. There's also this bit of a bindery issue. There's also this fold in the corner that goes front to back and is color breaking. And at the top of the back as well in the corner, there's another fold. And here on the back, some more spine, or sorry, some more spine ticks, a few that are color breaking. So this book also has the bindery issues as the other one and color breaking ticks, though the back on this book is more numerous. I can count a total of, I think, 10 on this book. The number of simple spine ticks and defects I can count on the CGC copy outnumber the PGX. I'm sure someone will come up with a reason to defend the almighty grading overlord CGC here, such as, they only subtract for the same defect this number of times. It's not really color breaking. It depends how the light hits it. But all joking aside, I think because of the vague descriptions, that leaves them more room for flexibility and subjectivity. And honestly, on this book, the grading was way too generous, to the point where I can't even consider selling this book. It's part of my PC, so that wouldn't happen anyways. But if I had sent this book to flip, I wouldn't feel I could ethically sell this as a 9-2, given the state of the book in the slap. So back to what I initially said, it isn't about one grader being harsher or an easier grade, it's consistency. How can the same company, in the same order, be too easy on this book, overly generous really, and also too harsh on another book? So where does that leave us? Well. PGX made it too hard to properly judge them. As much as I tried to ask for graders notes, they simply didn't supply them. You can check out my video on the customer service problems I had up here, if you haven't already. Now that's not to say that their grades are bad, but without notes, I have nothing to determine how or why they made the deductions that they did. I actually think they did a pretty solid job on this grading, and as it's my only experience with them, it was a good one. However, the concern about PGX I can see online kind of always surrounds their consistency. Maybe they're consistent and it's fine. Maybe they're not, but they don't even get into the conversation on firm footing. So what about the two companies you're really here to see compared? Taking just this submission into account, I would say that CBCS was more consistent in my opinion. The CGC grading on my Marvel team up compared against everything else compared against books from the other companies, leaves an amount of inconsistency in my mind. With CBCS, the grading seemed fair. The notes, although not in-depth or robust, they certainly aren't on every book. No one really provides notes on why your book got a 9.8 instead of a 9.9. They do provide an in-depth chart online that shows you exactly what they're looking at and where it qualifies your book. The same chart on CGC just doesn't give you as much depth. Now, 
I've submitted to both of these companies half a dozen times in the past year. And all in all, CGC has been good, but I've really only submitted books that are 9-8 candidates. There shouldn't be a ton of wiggle room there, but once you start dipping below a 9-8 or a 9-6, I start to have concerns over their consistency, simply because of this book. For me, for this submission, for this experiment, CBCS takes it as the most consistent grader with the best reference chart and notes. If you enjoyed the video or got something out of it, leave a like on the video and leave a comment below and let me know how consistent do you feel the grading is amongst these companies. If you haven't already checked out the other videos in this series, the video popping up on your screen now is a case comparison, so go check that out. And there will be a link below to the whole playlist as well as to the other grading sites and their scales. I will see you in the next video.